the political groups most empowered by this chaos, most empowered by this internet revolution, are the jihadists, right? Are the type of conservative extremists who don't want the future, they want the past. And I think that there's something to be said with our political envisioning, that it's no longer about utopias. I think as a concept, utopia has kind of been discarded. In fact, we have, a, dare I say, a radical pragmatism, that the most radical voices of our day are still pragmatists, are still people trying to deal with the messy political reality of the present. So I think really what we're seeing is that the internet allows people to either live in the present or fantasize about the past, but we've yet to really have a political movement or a political party that can synthesize the present and say, this is where we're heading. I mean, to give the communists credit, they were able to synthesize industrialization in a way that they could present a future, that they could say, this is where we're going, and they convinced millions of people for several decades to go that way. You know, granted with great horrors, but it speaks to the power of that political vision. In today's day and age, I don't know anyone that has a coherent vision of the future that has rallied people behind it so that it is a viable political movement. I mean, granted, people no longer have hopes for their children that their children might be richer or smarter or better off than them. Instead, they have fears for their children. I mean, if anything, the most popular political movements are stopgap measures, are, you know, let's stop destroying the environment. Let's, you know, stop throwing people in jail. Let's stop waging war. But no one's saying, let's start. Let's do something new. Let's start a new deal. Let's start a new project. And that, I think, is the bankruptcy of ideas that the internet offers.